No grades to take, gentlemen. Just take a stroll. There it is. Cameron, you can see him thinking, is this right? It might be right, it might be right. I know that, maybe not, I don't know. Mr. Overstreet, driven by a deeper force. Yes. We know that, all right. Now, I didn't bring them up here to ridicule them. I brought them up here to illustrate the point of conformity, the difficulty in maintaining your own beliefs in the face of others. Now, those of you, I see the look in your eyes like, I would have walked differently. Well, ask yourselves why you are clapping. We all have a great need for acceptance, but you must trust that your beliefs are unique, your own, even though others may think them odd or unpopular, even though the herd may go, that's bad. <laughs> Robert Frost said, two roads diverged in the wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And I want you to find your own walk right now, your own way of striding, pacing, any direction, anything you want, whether it's proud, whether it's silly, anything. Gentlemen, the courtyard is yours. <laughs> you don't have to perform. You just make it for yourself. <laughs> Mr. Dalton, you'll be joining us. Exercising the right not to walk. Thank you, Mr. Dalton. You just illustrated the point. Swim against the stream. Having lunch with the plastics was like leaving the actual world and entering girl world. And girl world had a lot of rules. You can't wear a tank top two days in a row, and you can only wear your hair in a ponytail once a week. So I guess you pick today. Oh, and we only wear jeans or track pants on Fridays. Now, if you break any of these rules, you can't sit with us at lunch. Well, I mean, not just you, like, any of us. Okay, like, if I was wearing jeans today, I would be sitting over there with the art freaks. <laughs> Oh, and we always vote before we ask someone to eat lunch with us because you have to be considerate of the rest of the group. Well, I mean, you wouldn't buy a skirt without asking your friends first if it looks good on you. I wouldn't? Right.
How important is that objective? Question one rates the poem's perfection. Question two rates its importance. And once these questions have been answered, determining the poem's greatness becomes a relatively simple matter. If the poem's score for perfection is plotted on the horizontal of a graph... Mr. Keating, they made everybody sign Mr. Anderson? Mr. You gotta believe me, it's true. I do believe you, Tom. Leave, Mr. Keating. But it wasn't his fault. Sit down, Mr. Anderson. One more outburst from you or anyone else, and you're out of this school. Leave, Mr. Keating. I said leave, Mr. Keating. Captain, my captain. Sit down, Mr. Anderson. You hear me? Sit down. Sit down. This is your final warning, Anderson. How dare you? You hear me? Go, oh, Captain, my captain. Mr. Overstreet, I warn you. Sit down. Ten thirty three. 